Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I am here joined by Mr. Daniel Skronsky, the CEO of DX Exchange. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. So starting off, would you, would you care to give a brief introduction about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of DX Exchange. Uh, DX Exchange is a centralized utility token exchange. Um, we're also launching a security token exchange at the same time. Um, I think we're probably mostly known recently for our launch of digital tokens or digital stocks, mm -hmm. where we've digitalized uh, shares such as Apple and Google. Um, we have a technology and surveillance partnership with NASDAQ, uh, where we use their technology. And uh, we're based in, uh, in the EU, under EU regulation. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're in a soft launch right now, but we hope in uh, February to be uh, fully live. The NASDAQ stock trading platform is something I really was interested in. So would you care to give a brief summary on how the technology takes place to hold the trade of stocks on using cryptocurrency, the concept of cryptocurrency? Okay, so first on the NASDAQ part is just to be clear, we use their uh, technology. So we use two parts of it. One is the matching engine technology, mm -hmm. which is where all the trades kind of come together. Um, and the second part is the surveillance system, which is uh, a system that monitors all the trading and the activity on the exchange. So it's looking for anything such as um, you know, trade manipulation, any kind of uh, pump trading, any kind of uh, irregular, irregularities in, in terms <laughs> yes. of uh, trading. Um, and in terms of the digital stock, so the way it works is uh, a company called MPS Securities, uh, they're based in Cyprus, they're EU regulated under a market maker license, so they have the same MIFID II ISMA regulation as does anyone like an HSBC or, uh, or Citibank. Mm -hmm. um, and what they've done is uh, they have the right to purchase and hold um, securities real securities, so say for from example, actual companies, right? from actual companies, right? So for example, Tesla, right? So they'll purchase check Tesla, and what they've done is they've basically taken Tesla in this stock and created it into a um, ERC-20 token, and uh, they digitalized it. So each token is backed by one single share of Tesla stock. That token, that ERC-20 token, is traded on DX exchange. So just like uh, stable coins are traded on behalf of a dollar, it's a dollar very similar, bill, correct. So stocks are traded on behalf of your uh, tokens are listed on DX exchange, is that correct? Correct, it's, it's very similar. You know, the, the one thing is I want to point out is this is not considered a security token in the traditional sense. Mm -hmm. It's um, more of a, what's called a derivative product under the MIFID II and the uh, EU rules, right? So um, similar to how CFDs work with uh, in terms of Providing more leverage and things like that, which you know we don't we don't provide, but it is a derivative um, offering under the ISMA rules. That's how we were able to make this work. Mm -hmm. But then, the fact that you mentioned it being the tokens not being a security is something mm -hmm. I really want to get into. So when it comes to stocks, when mm -hmm. a person buys stocks, it's bought under the name of the concept of a security. Mm -hmm. But then if they are buying a cryptocurrency, a representative cryptocurrency on behalf of it, mm -hmm. uh, would they be subject to legal issues when it comes to trading or you know, buying the stocks itself? Um, in terms of legal issues, no. I, I think the best, the, best thing about, the best thing about buying the digital stock is two things. One, you can, you're, you can now buy a fraction of a share. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, one of the things that I really like about the digital stocks and that we've gotten a lot of uh, interest around is, yeah, have you ever heard of the term the bank, the unbankable? So, oh. <laughs> you know, it's almost like trade, the trade, untradeable, right? Yes, you know, yes. so for example, in Indonesia, um, they're the larger, largest user base of Facebook, mm -hmm. but nobody can own the stock because it's too expensive for them. Mm -hmm. But now, this uh, being able to digitalize, say, Facebook like we have, somebody can buy just $10 or $5 or $20 worth of Facebook stock mm -hmm. and be able to now feel as if they're a part ownership. Because that token is backed by the, the real share, they still end up with the, the rights, for example, as a dividend. Now, they don't get the voting rights, but they do get the dividend rights. So, you know, the one thing I also want to make clear is, uh, from a legal perspective, we don't allow U.S. customers to trade on DX. And, mm -hmm. and also, what we've done is, when somebody wants to take this token into their own personal wallet off the exchange, mm -hmm. that wallet must be whitelisted. And what that does is it locks the token to that particular user, as well as they can only then trade it amongst other whitelisted 
uh, wallets. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I had it and you weren't whitelisted, I could never sell you that Apple stock. Mm -hmm. So this, this basically does two things. One, it helps DX keep a track of where all the yes. tokens are to make sure that they stay and maintain the ledger. As well as two, it doesn't fall into the hands of people who are legally not allowed to uh, trade these types of uh, instruments or derivative products, which in, in this case is U.S. citizens. To be honest, personally, I'm a huge fan of DX Exchange. Thank you very much. But me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but then, when it comes to some recent to recent weeks, uh, yeah. it hasn't been. It's been a bit of a bumpy road. Yeah. Now, yeah. first thing we have to you know, get off our there's we have to start off with the is the security vulnerability that was detected sure. by. A company named Ars Technica, which yeah. suggested that there that the codes that you have implemented within your platform has a vulnerability which leaks valuable user information. Mm -hmm. Would you care to comment on that? Well, we we made our comment uh, um, publicly, but I will say it wasn't the platform; it was the on the web website. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, it had nothing to do with the trading platform. It was on, on more on the website, and uh, we you know we as soon as we heard about it, we fixed it. We fixed it very very quickly. And uh, every, every, all the user data was safe. There was no, no risk to any of the funds at any time for any of the customers. And uh, you know, since then, there's been uh, it's been clear sailing. But we, <laughs> one of the things that we did implement um, was we hired a new security firm uh, out of Israel to basically do an additional round of uh, consistent testing and penetration testing to make sure that uh, that the exchange stays safe, safe and uh, user funds continue to stay safe. Was the vulnerability detected before? you guys started listing users? It was literally within, I think, the first couple hours that we went live. Um, so very, very, uh, there was a very limited amount of exposure and uh, those users that had been were already contacted and things were changed and modified and so we were, we were very fortunate about that. One surprising factor was that some of the employees' uh, information yeah. was leaked. It was, it was actually um, from, um, a, a different group of employees, not the main DX Exchange employee group. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting that this was even found or even out there. But uh, yes, it was. Uh, I, I must admit, you know, it was our fault. I'm a bit embarrassed by it. <laughs> uh, it was the last thing that we needed after, you know, just you know, setting out on and going live with the soft launch. But uh, uh, look, again, we fixed it right away, and the good thing is everything was safe. So since then, how is the current status of DX Exchange? Has the user base been uh, concretely? Uh, found and uh, as well as the development or the trading platform as well? So, you know, again, we're in a soft launch and as, as probably anyone who's in the tech space knows, even when you move a, uh, an, uh, your, you know, from the test net over to production, for some reason, it just doesn't <laughs> still work as the same, even no matter how much testing you've done. Yes. And, you know, there, there's been some bugs and issues, but one thing I've been really, really uh, proud to say is, you know, we've, we've been uh, kind of, been anticipated to be live since I guess around May of last year mm -hmm. and our community has been really really supportive of us um, I think people are thirsting for an exchange like ours to come online and and so they've kind of forgiven us so far for the bumps and roads but I know <laughs> we we have a lot of work to do I know the team is still working you know 24 7 uh, trying to get some some things that have been fixed and it's it seems to be only to certain number of users in certain areas for some reason But you know look with any new exchange going live. There's always going to be bumps yes, I think if you look at some of the early uh, ones uh, on some of the other big guys that are today uh, They had a lot of bumps and, and bruises in the very and beginning there still are I mean. and and there still are right so um, but you know look I, I think uh, we're getting through the worst part of it and it's just growing pains, but what we're this is the whole point of having these kind of soft launches is to work out these kinks and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as there's uh, no more security issues <laughs> and uh, uh, user funds are safe, um, you know, it seems like the community is really, really supporting. And I've been very, very uh, fortunate as well as very, very proud to say that, you know, the DX community has been uh, exceptional in this case. It's indeed fortunate that none, none of the funds from the users were stolen or leaked to mm -hmm. any malicious actors. But then one allegation that DX Exchange received recently was about its operations mm -hmm. or the owners of DX Exchange mm -hmm. being partially a former owner of Spot Option, a binary mm -hmm. trading platform. Mm -hmm. So would you care to comment on that as well? Um, I think, you know, we made the comments, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pretty clear in our Twitter account. And, yes. um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of misinformation that's out there. And uh, I think uh, I think I'll just leave it at that. You know, but, it's, but the 
official document posted by the media portal suggested that the parent company of DX Exchange is indeed the owner was a previous owner of Spot Option. Now, was the document something of a fraud or was the, was the document false or was, did they get that wrong? Um, I, I haven't seen the document, so I, I can't really comment. <laughs> okay. So, uh, NASDAQ-based trading, trading platform, that is a very prominent uh, direction that you're headed for. But then it is not the only thing that DX Exchange is doing, right? Mm -hmm. Other than NASDAQ-backed trading, you also have stable coins. Also, I believe you might be tapping into cryptocurrencies as well, Bitcoin and all that. Um, yeah, so again, we're, we're a utility-based exchange as mm -hmm. well. And um, I think um, you know we're, we're listing the top five to seven tokens for sure that are already on the exchange. You can go there and you can see them. Um, and then we're adding new ones every day. Uh, I think, you know, look, one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to look for good blockchain-based products. We feel as an exchange, it's kind of our responsibility to, um, to make sure that the projects that are good, that are out there, that are worth it, to be listed on the exchange. In other words, you can't buy your way onto to DX like you can in some other, other exchanges. Mm -hmm. we're, we're really looking for just new projects. Even the existing ones that are out there, it's great to have just because if somebody's coming and they want to trade, I don't know, for example, Stellar or mm -hmm. something, uh, we should have that on the platform because it's a good project. But really, what we're, we're, the reason why we come to a lot of the conferences or go on the road is we're actually really digging deep and searching for that, those really good projects to list on the exchange. So this is one of my favorite questions when it comes to interviewing exchanges. Okay. So what is DX Exchange's uh, values when it comes to listing? Is it the... Uh, is it the market cap, is it the value, or is it the uh, team? How would the process take place when it comes to listing on DX Exchange? I think it starts with the team, mm -hmm. um, who, who's really there working on the project. And I'm not talking about the advisors, you know, because that can be all <laughs> fake, right? Mm -hmm. I don't even care who the investors are, right? It's more about who's actually working on the, on the product. It's, you know, and, and I think that's the kind of the value I look at at even DX Exchange. Um, when you look at who I am or who our COO is or who are the people that are working as a development, that core team, that's the team that's going to deliver whether the product is going to be you know, a success, not, not the investors, not the advisors. Um, most advisors aren't even involved in projects <laughs> very, very rarely anyways, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really about looking at you know who, who that team is. So that's probably, for me, that's my number one. But just keep in mind, I'm not the one who really ultimately <laughs> decides uh, the choice. But I do know that's a that's a big score on the on the on the on the ranking part. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, it's it's about whether or not the project is viable or not. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, and usually you see that from some sort of working prototype. Mm -hmm. So, like you mentioned, um, the Nasdaq trading does stop. By the way, I'm curious to know what other exchanges answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually they refer to it as an internal progress where they can't disclose any ah, proce okay. specific procedures. I don't mind, you know, I mean, at the end of the day for me, because most likely they're, they're, it's money first, but for, <laughs> for, for us, again, it really is about who is the actual team working on the project. Now, finishing off on the interview, uh, would you care to leave a last comment to our Korean viewers as to raise awareness on the DX exchange of, or the new concept of stock-backed tra trading of cryptocurrencies? Um, I think... Um, Again, DX Exchange, we're fully regulated in the EU. Um, one thing that we will be adding, we will be adding Korean won as one of the, uh, the deposits. We, we are a fiat exchange, so currently we support USD, Euro, Yen, Sterling, and eventually Korean won. Um, and you know, South Korea is a very important market for us because we know that um, I think Korea has probably one of the largest active trader user bases. And uh, you know, we've come here a couple times, and we're even thinking about possibly even launching a, an, an office here. Uh, and getting regulated. So um, we would love uh, nothing more for you guys to come check it out. We have a, a Korean channel on uh, Telegram. You can join it. And we also, our full website is in Korean as well. So will there be a Korean exclusive airdrop of Apple stocks? <laughs> we, we, we don't do uh, any of the digital stocks as uh, any kind of airdrops. We actually, we don't, we're not allowed to do airdrops uh, from our regulation point of view. But uh, there, there could be some DX Cash uh, uh, giveaways, perhaps. <laughs> well, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Daniel Skrowski, the CEO of DX Exchange.